Everybody loves color. Since we were children, we love to draw and color our favorite pictures with some pencils or markers. Still today we love to do so, maybe by buying a sweater in our favorite blue shade or by wearing our favorite black pair of jeans. The color can really create your own identity, especially in textiles it plays an important role. But have you ever wondered how garments are dyed? In this video we will talk about conventional dyeing processes that are used today in textiles. Spoiler, all these processes use a lot of water, tons of liter of water, let's see that together. First of all, let's distinguish two types of dyeing, the continuous dyeing and the discontinuous dyeing processes. Continuous dyeing means that the material starts running through a dyeing bath and then it's coiled on the end of the machine. On the other hand, discontinuous means that you put the material into an autoclave, you run out the dyeing bath that absorbs all the dye stuffs and then discharges the residue. Nowadays in textiles, continuous and discontinuous dyeing are both very much used. But the question is, when in the textile supply chain should I perform dyeing? The answer is simple, it depends. First of all, we have fiber dyeing. Fiber dyeing can be mass dyeing or dope dyeing in case of synthetic or artificial fibers. You dye the fibers with master batches, during extrusion for example. On the other hand, if we talk about unnatural fibers such as cotton or hemp, there is the staple dyeing. You can indeed dye the staple fibers before the spinning processes. It's cool because in this case you dye an agricultural product, not a textile product, because spinning has not been performed yet. Then we have, for example, the top dyeing. Top dyeing can be Vigoro dyeing or printing or the dyeing per se. If you don't know what a top is, it's basically a hybrid between a yarn and a fiber. It's an intermediate of the spinning. Then we have yarn dyeing. In yarn dyeing we can have package dyeing, which is the most used. You basically dye the yarn cones in an outer clay. Then we have the hank dyeing. Package dyeing and hank dyeing are 99% of the cases discontinuous dyeing. Then we have special dyeing and printings such as astro dye, space dyeing, printing on rollers, immersion dyeing, sprinkle dyeing, and so on. But in this case, we are talking about 1% of the total dyeing production. The most used are indeed package dyeing and hank dyeing, of course. Then if we go on on the textile supply chain, we have the beam dyeing. It can be discontinuous or continuous. Discontinuous because you can actually put the beam into an autoclave and dye. After the fiber, the yarn and the beam, of course there is the woven fabric or the knitted fabric. In this case we talk about fabric dyeing or piece dyeing. There is for example the open width dyeing, jet dyeing, overflow dyeing, winch dyeing, jigger, HD beam dyeing. All these type of dyings are discontinuous or continuous and it depends on the final results that you want to obtain. And then after the fabric we have the making up and the cutting of the garment, so we have garment dyeing. In this case we can have immersion dyeing, degradé dyeing, that can actually give special effects to your garment. This is guys a general view of all the dyeing processes that exist and use water nowadays in textiles. But the question is just one. Why should I perform dyeing on garments rather than on yarn? Normally, if you perform dyeing earlier in the supply chain, you have better color fastnesses, but you lose time. If you, on the other hand, perform dyeing on fabric or garments, you gain a lot of time, but it costs less. But the performances of the color fastness are not so good after all. Normally, the rule is that you perform the finishings, so for example, water repellent finishings on garments and fabrics in order to be stronger and you perform dyeing on yarn or staples or fabrics in order to have better color fastnesses. But it's just my rule, you have to find your own rule in textiles. Just remember to use color catches sheets, especially if the garment is new, because you don't know how the garment has been dyed. And this is actually a good tip in order to avoid bad surprises after doing the laundry. Can I perform continuous dyeing on yarn cones? The answer is yes, guys. Actually, there is a um, new type of machine that can perform continuous dyeing on cones. You place the greenish raw yarn in the beginning of the machine, then you start the machine and the yarn is dyed through a dyeing bath and it's coned in the end of the machine. So yeah, you can perform it. It's not so common. Can I not use water in dyeing? Yeah, actually, this is. A, I will uh, surely talk about this in another video in the future, but yes, there is a technology called, for example, Daiko. It's a company located in Holland, and 
it uses supercritical CO2 instead of water to dye the garments and fabrics. We have two problems. It costs a lot, so it's a money problem. And the second problem is that the dye stuffs are not so commonly used. I mean, to dye with this technology, you have to use uh, rare and specific dye stuffs that are not so common in the markets. That's it for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the content of this video. You will find my details below with the email and Reddit and so on. If you need some consultancy, if you have any questions, I'm at disposal naturally. So, yeah, as usual, stay safe, take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.